Hello everyone. I love steam trains, so today is my lucky day. I'm in North Wales to go on a ride through the Snowdonia Mountains and learn all about these amazing machines. Woohoo! This train is just leaving the station now. Look at all that steam coming out. It's no wonder they're called steam trains. Many years ago, these trains were used to transport slate from up high in the mountains. But now they're just used to take lucky passengers on amazing train rides. Come on, let's get on board. These old fashioned carriages are very comfy. And you can even get yummy hot chocolate served straight to your seats. This train is the best. Just look at the amazing views out of the windows as we steam our way through the Snowdonia Mountains. Wow, it's beautiful here. We're all very clean and comfortable in here. But I wonder what it's like for the driver in the cabin up front. The part of the train that does all of the hard work is called the locomotive. And it's up to the driver and the fireman to keep the locomotive running and pulling all of those carriages and passengers. Steam trains run on coal and the fireman has to shovel lots of it into the firebox to keep the engine running. This is Ian, and he's the driver of this locomotive. Ian, please can you tell us how coal makes the train go? So this is the coal we burn on our steam engine. Put it in the fire there. And we burn it and that creates lots and lots of heat. And that heat we use to boil this water. Um, it's just like boiling your kettle at home. It makes the steam come out the top, but we capture that steam and we send it to the front of this steam logo and that makes us go. To make sure there's enough coal for the journey ahead, the crew have to load up the train's coal from the coal store at the station. This is hard, tiring and dirty work. All of the crew that work on the train are volunteers too, which means they don't get paid. They do it because they love the trains. This is Claire and she's the fireman. It's her job to load the coal into the firebox and keep that fire roaring. And what I'm doing now is I'm making my fire bigger because we're pulling a very big train today. So it needs a nice, big, very hot fire to be able to do that. I love steam trains because I just find them magical. As well as loading the coal into the train, it's just as important to make sure the train has plenty of water in the tank because this is what gets turned into steam, which pushes the train forwards. The crew are topping up this train's tank with water now. Wow, this one's thirsty. Ian, how do you drive a steam train? We drive a steam train by making it go faster like that. And then this is the brake. And this is what we use to stop ourselves. So this lever here makes us go either forwards or backwards. And that is how you drive a steam train. Let's take a look at the different parts of a steam train. Here's the cab. This is where the driver and fireman drive the train and load the fire. Inside here is the firebox, which is really, really hot. Above the firebox sits the boiler, where the water is stored. Because this is right above the fire, the water boils and turns into steam. The steam is then forced down through a pipe and pushes something called a piston, which then drives the wheels forwards or backwards. This is the chimney, which is where the smoke from the firebox can escape. And most importantly, this is the whistle. The whistle works when I pull this handle. 
And that means that steam is going up to the whistle and making the sound. Ian's connecting a carriage to the locomotive. This is called coupling. Because these trains are very old, they take a lot of looking after, which is why the Festiniog and Welsh Highland Railway have their own special garage with an amazing team of engineers, mechanics, joiners and painters. This place is a hive of activity. In here, they're building a brand new carriage from scratch. And in here, this is where the beautiful details on the outside of the carriage are painted on by hand. Well, it's time for me to say goodbye to these beautiful trains. Thanks very much to all the team at the Festinog and Welsh Highland Railway for teaching us all about steam trains. See you again soon. Bye. Hello everyone. I'm here at the Gresford Miniature Railway to meet some mini steam trains. These trains are exactly the same as real steam engines, except much, much smaller. But that means they're really fun to ride on. The Mechanicals didn't want to come with me today. They said they only want to see big vehicles. Those silly Mechanicals don't know what they're missing out on. This is David and he's a model engineer and mini train driver. This is his locomotive and it's called the Royal Air Force. It took David 12 years to build this special locomotive and today we're going to send it whizzing around the track. This part is called the tender and it's where coal and extra water can be stored. Now that David's train is safely on the track, it's time to transfer it onto a steaming bay. This is where the fire inside the locomotive can be lit and the boiler gets filled up with water. This process is called steaming up. First, David uses this pump to fill the boiler with lots of water. The boiler is inside this part here. More water can then be poured into the tender to keep the boiler topped up when the train is running. OK, Jim, tea's ready. Hey, hey. And here's one for you, Gecko. Oh, thank you very much, Paul. Next. It's time to fill the firebox with coal. David has soaked these bits of coal in a liquid that makes them burn much faster. The fire is then lit from underneath the firebox. David builds the fire by shoveling more mini pieces of coal into the firebox. As the fire heats the water in the boiler, the pressure builds up and has to escape somewhere. And... Woo! There it goes! A quick oil around the parts and cylinders to keep everything moving smoothly and we're ready to go! David's friend Paul swings the track over and it's full steam ahead! Coal is the fuel for this steam train and David needs plenty to power the train around the track. A quick stop at the coal store to load up the tender to make sure we have enough coal for the day.
to let David's train onto the main track. Brian here needs to change the points. He checks no other trains are coming, pulls these levers, and the track magically moves all by itself. Green means go! Woo! Now David can whiz around the track. believe the mechanicals are missing this. It looks so much fun. So, David, how do you drive a mini train? Well, first of all, you need coal for the fire. You put the coal into the firebox and uh, that makes the fire. And the fire boils the water in the boiler. And the steam from the, the boiled water is then taken off down to the cylinders, which drives the engine and this lever is called the regulator and we just turn that and then the engine will start going forwards. Hey, mechanicals, have you been here all along? Do you want to have a ride? David, the mechanicals are so excited that they're letting off their own steam. Come on, mechanicals, jump aboard. Mechanicals love these mini trains almost as much as these children. Well, Mechanicals, did you have fun after all? Thanks so much to David and all the model engineers at Gresford Miniature Railway for teaching us all about these amazing trains. You can watch more videos from me by tapping here. And to subscribe to my channel, just tap here. Bye! Hello everyone, I'm here today at Alton Towers Resort. I'm going to have a ride on some amazing roller coasters and learn all about how they work. Roller coasters are designed for one thing, fun! No two are the same. They can do loops, twists, spins, and can go really, really fast. But how do these amazing roller coasters work? Let's take a closer look. Roller coasters run on tracks like trains, but there's lots of differences too. Trains only have one set of wheels that rest on top of the track. But these cars have three sets of wheels. One on the top, one on the side, and one underneath to grip the track. This means that the roller coaster can do things that trains can't, like going upside down while still staying on the track. But the main difference between trains and roller coasters is how they are powered. Power is what makes everything start just like batteries in a toy helps them turn on. A roller coaster car doesn't have an engine for power, so to get the car moving fast along the track, it first needs to be pulled to the top of a very big hill. On this ride called Nemesis, a long chain pulls the car all the way to the top. The car is then released 
and gravity brings it down the track at whizzing speeds. Gravity is an invisible force that pulls all things down towards the Earth. It's like sliding down a slide. Gravity pulls you downwards. Woohoo! This ride, Oblivion, works in the same way. The chains slowly pull the car up to the top, which makes the people on the ride very nervous. Wow! Look how high that is! This ride is a straight drop, which means there is only one way down. Scary! Some rides don't get pulled up a big hill, but instead are connected to a really long metal rope. When everyone's ready, it's time for launch. The powerful rope is reeled in and pulls really hard on the car. Ready, steady, go, go, go! The rope has launched the car along the track like a huge slingshot. This ride's called Rita and it can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.5 seconds. That's as fast as a racing car. When this ride needs to slow down, powerful magnets rise up and use magnetic force to slow down the car. A final set of brakes hold the train in place, bringing the ride to a stop. With all these twists, turns and loops, roller coasters have to be really safe. So all the people who work at Alton Towers work hard to make sure everyone on the ride is secure by loading them onto the ride carefully and checking their seatbelts. Clever computers triple check the safety of all passengers too. But roller coasters don't just carry people. At this roller coaster restaurant, it's food and drinks that ride the roller coasters. When the food is ready, they're sent down the track straight to your table. Yum, yum. Well, I think that's quite enough excitement for one day. Thanks to the Alton Towers team for showing us around today. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello everyone! Gecko here! I'm here at Wigston Fire Station to meet a vehicle that's a really big deal. Hold on to your hats, because here it comes! Woohoo! That is the cutest fire engine I've ever seen! This is the mini fire engine, and it's used by the amazing firefighters here to teach children all about fire safety. This is Kane. He's a firefighter and the driver of this mini fire engine. It's got all the usual things you'd expect on board. Flashing lights, a siren and a ladder. All in an itty bitty teeny tiny size. But best of all, it's got plenty of room in the back for children to have fun rides. Look at that! There's a pretend radio for making emergency calls. You can really see just how small the mini fire truck is when it's parked next to its big sister. This fire truck is big and this one is small. Hey Gecko, want to go for a ride? I thought you'd never ask. Yes, please. The 
mini fire truck is powered by electricity. That means it's got a big battery on board that can be charged overnight. It's very easy to drive. Kane just puts his foot on the pedal and steers with the steering wheel. To turn on the flashing lights and sirens, he presses these buttons. Woohoo! We've arrived at the park. Kane, I think these children would like a ride. That's it. Get your special firefighting kit on. Jump aboard! Wow! We can fit loads of children in the back and even one in the front next to Kane. It's very important that you're safe in any vehicle, so the first thing you should always do is put your seatbelt on. This fire engine is so small that it's allowed on roads and footpaths. This is going to be a fantastic ride. Wave hello to everyone. After the ride, Kane teaches the mini firefighters some important fire safety lessons. This one's called Stop, Drop and Roll. Fire is very dangerous and if there's ever any fire on your clothes, you should stop, drop to the floor, cover your face and roll around. loved spending the day with this amazing mini fire engine. Thanks very much to Kane and all of the team at Wigston Fire Station. For now, it's cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Bobby the bus is visiting us today, so we can learn what makes him special. Great to see you. Shall we go inside and put Bobby on the turntable so that we can take a closer look at him? Let's all see what we can learn as we make Bobby turn. Bobby's wheels. He wouldn't take his passengers very far without these. They go round and round, just like in the Wheels on the Bus song. Bobby's sign. Bobby has a sign that can change to tell passengers where he's going. It helps passengers catch the right bus. Bobby's wipers. These keep his windscreen clear of rain and dirt and bugs so his driver can see where they're going. Bobby's headlights. Bobby needs powerful lights for driving at night time. They help him see the road and help other vehicles to see him. Bobby's horn. Bobby's horn is very loud. He can sound his horn in an emergency to make sure other vehicles know he's there. Bobby's doors. Bobby has a special set of doors for his passengers. 
so that they can get on and off the bus easily. Bobby's engine. Buses are heavy and need a powerful engine to turn the wheels. Bobby's rear lights. Bobby has red lights at the back so that other vehicles can see him in the dark and also to let them know when he's slowing down to stop. Thanks to Bobby for helping us today. I hope you enjoyed finding out about what makes a bus special. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Here come some of our smaller vehicle friends. They're going to help us learn to count to ten today. Let's count them. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten. Can you help me count all the vehicles whilst they do their important jobs? Vicky the ice cream van is number one, making sure everyone at the beach has fun. Sid the skid loader is number two. There's a hundred and one different things he can do. Trevor the tractor is number three. Ploughing the fields and sowing the seed. Rick the road roller is number four. He can squash anything left on the floor. Tony the taxi is number five. He'll take you wherever you need to drive. Number six is Amber, a real go-getter. Takes people to the hospital so they can get better. Seven is Mia the mini digger. Like her brother Danny, only he's a lot bigger. Sophie the sports car is number eight. She loves to drive fast and she just can't wait. Florence the forklift is truck number nine, fetching and carrying all of the time. Number 10 is Millie. She must be the last. The police bike checks nobody's driving too fast. Are you ready to count them one more time? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten helpful vehicles. Thanks for helping us count today. That was great fun. See you again soon. Bye.